So let's take a look at one of the most famous controllers ever built, okay? Just call it a Proportional Integral Derivative Controllers or PID controllers, okay? So PID controllers are actually extremely powerful and extremely applied like world basically everywhere, in pretty much every applications. I've seen them applied in engines and batteries and pretty much every, every applications, all right? So what do we mean by a PID controllers? Okay, all what we know is that we know that I have my set point, which is my desired response, my desired value. In our case before, it's our desired, for example, level of water within the tank, right? What we do is that we measure, okay, the actual current level, and we calculate an error signal. So what we do, like what we have done so far, we have our set point, we have our process, which let's say our plant, for example, all right, our tank, we measure the level of water or fluid within that tank, subtract it from our set point, and that will give us our the error signal, okay, which is the difference between my set point and my feedback, all right, that's great. Uh, just to clarify, I don't want you to be confused. Here we used to have a sensor before, right? Here we're just going to assume that the sensor function, or we'll call it transfer function, we're going to discuss what you mean by transfer function later, is basically, let's assume it's one, which means what I'm measuring is the exact same unit as we're going to basically use it here for comparison, okay? Don't worry about it. Assume the sensor of one, okay? Here we have our error signal, all right? And what we do is that, okay, let's assume that I want it, for example, to, um, to, let's assume that we have our tank, and let's assume that I want it to basically fill up that tank really quickly, okay? Let's assume that. So how can we fill up that tank really quickly? If you recall, we had water going into the tank, right? And then we have water going out of the tank, and we are controlling the valve out, right? What should I do to basically make sure that the water goes up really quickly, that level of water grows? What you need to do for the operator, he needs to close the valve really fast, right? So when you close the valve really fast, actually the water starts to build up really quickly until you reach your desired level, correct? All right. So what if, okay, so the first question is, how can we take the error signal and make the action fast? Okay, it's a very simple idea, okay? Why don't we, let's say, multiply it by a gain? If the error, let's say, is 0 0.5, we're just gonna take it and multiply it by 10. So it becomes, let's say, five, which means you actually close or open the valve really quickly, very, very strong, strongly, okay? What we have just described is very simple. It's what we call the proportional element or the proportional controls, which is we'll take the error signal magnify it, multiply it by a large value, so the actual control action will gonna be really high, high, so you can reach your desired you know, response really quickly, which is really good. So that's actually the first part. It's the proportional part, which is the first block here. And what we have done is that actually the, the proportional block, it actually depends on what we call the present error. So we take whatever the value of error right now, multiply it by a gain, so we magnify it, and that's what we see here. So you would see that we take the error error signal, multiply it by a gain, we call that gain KP, or proportional gain. And that becomes KPE, which is proportional gain multiplied by the error signal. And that will give us, you know, the first control action, which is directly proportional to the present error, which is present happening now. Okay, that's great. The problem is, if we use only use proportional controller, you will see that you are actually multiplying the, you're actually opening the valve, okay? Opening the valve or closing the valve really quickly. So water goes up really quickly. And then, you know, the error will become the opposite direction. So you have to multiply again by another gain. So you close the valve, you know, like the other side really quickly and then open the valve really quickly. And you will see that the system response is like, especially if the gain is high, is actually oscillating, right? Why? Because you don't look, okay, as humans, we are much, much smarter than this. We actually look at the past, we look at the future, and we look at the present, right? We, we know what should we expect in the future. We predict what's happening in the future. We look at the present, and we actually look at the past. However, proportional controller is kind of, you know, like, doesn't have that smartness in it. It just looks at the present. It just multiplied by gain, you know, and that's where you see all these oscillations. We're going to simulate all these models. It's pretty interesting. You will see how, how do all these, like, uh, elements work. Okay, so I think you guessed it. So the proportional part looks at the present, 
we need an element that looks at the past, okay? And we covered that before. Actually, to do this, we can use an integrator, okay? An integrator is an actually really powerful element. Why? Because we integrate the error, okay? When we say integration, we actually sum up the error. So I know what happened the last sample interval. I know what happened five seconds ago. I know what happened, let's say, 10 seconds ago. And that's what we call it an integration. So an integration looks at the past because it accumulates the error. And that's the beauty of having a PI controller. Proportional looks at the present. Integral looks at the past. All right. So what we do is that we integrate the error and then multiply it by another gain. We call it KI, which is the integral gain, KI. Okay, that's great. What about the future? Actually, the future can be um, can be applied using what we call the derivative element or the derivative controls. Okay, actually, the derivative element looks at the future. Why? Again, it's kind of a, a uh, from a philosophical point of view. You actually the derivative, the idea of a derivative that you look at the slope of the line, right? So if you give you any curve, okay, you actually look at the slope, right? So it will tell you, the slope will tell you, if the slope is positive, it will tell you that, okay, like in the future, highly likely we're going to go up, right? If the slope is negative, that means highly likely we're going to go down and so on. So that's why it's kind of a prediction to the future. So if you take the derivative of the error, that will tell you the rate or the change in the error. That will tell you why, what's my, possibly my future uh, direction is. And that's why we look at the future when we apply the derivative element, all right? And that's pretty much it. So you have my, your proportional present, integral past, derivative, look at the future. Let's combine them together and add all the smartness in there. And that will do we, and that's what we mean when we design what we call it proportional integral derivative controllers. All right. So the weighted summation of all that basically will create our control action. All right. So let's, let's go into the math. Again, I don't want you to be like, you know, scared. It's very simple and we're going to implement it in Simulink environment and we're going to develop a lot of models with it. It's actually pretty cool. So we have our error signal multiplied by KP. That will give me the proportional element. That's the first element. If we take again the error, integrate it, multiply it by KI, that will give me the integral portion. That will give me the past, right? If we take the error, we take the derivative, multiplied by k, I'm sorry, this is kd, that will become the, actually, let's correct it right now, that's k, that's kd, okay? And that basically will be my derivative term. So I have kp, ki, and kd, and that will look into the future, all right? That's it. That's pretty much it. If you add them together, that will give us basically more what we call it proportional integral derivative controllers. So KP plus KI plus KDS, if we combine them, basically all of them together, that will give us basically the transfer function. Okay, if, even if we don't cover the transfer function, don't worry about it. We'll cover it later on. That will tell us exactly what's my proportional integral derivative action in the S domain. Okay, let's review how can we obtain that. So KP multiplied by E, that's easy. That's KPES, right? The first element. Integration, if you remember, we take the exact signal from time domain, make it to the S domain. We divide by S. So it becomes KI divided by S, correct? And then if for the derivative, we actually multiply by S. So it becomes S multiplied by, the, um, by KD, right? And that would be pretty much it. So KP plus KI divided by S plus KDS. And that would become our controller or control action in Laplace domain or the S domain. And if we combine, if we take S as a common denominator, you will see that it becomes KDS squared plus KPS plus KI. And that's it. That's our proportional integral derivative control action in time domain and in the Laplace domain. Okay, again, I don't like, you know, equation that much. What we need to do, or what I really like is actually take these equations, basically implement them in an actual Simulink environment, and let's feel it. Let's see how can we change the parameters and, um, and know exactly what the impact of, of changing all of these parameters is on the system. I hope you guys enjoyed that course. Let's, let's discuss how can we build the PID controller 
in an actual simulink environment. 